Hey, I'm Connie. And I'm Connie. And we are Bad News Travel Spass. <laughs> Man, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking, we haven't been here in a while. Feels like it anyway. It's just one week. I know. We missed a week, but it feels like forever. So maybe we missed you guys a little bit. They don't even know that we missed them. Oh, uh, uh, maybe the not. No. Oh, uh, you don't know that we skipped a week? No, because we oh, did like okay. a few that day. Oh, oops. <laughs> That's just my <laughs> personal feelings. Okay. Anyway. So anyway, <laughs> yes, please take some time right now this second to click like. Go ahead. We're, we're, we're. <laughs> Click like, share, and make your make sure you're subscribed. And also check us out on Instagram mm -hmm. and yes. Facebook. And Facebook, yeah. And Facebook, not Twitter. <laughs> not Twitter. <laughs> she says Twitter every single time, <laughs> but it's not Twitter. All right. So, what's our topic today? So, I just realized that people have different cleaning styles, and what is common. To somebody is not common to everybody. You know how to say common knowledge is not common to everyone. So I wanted to kind of ask you a few questions because I know that you have a business of cleaning. <laughs> and so I guess my first question is what's the difference between cleaning and straightening up? Oh, uh, there's a big difference between cleaning and straightening up. So straightening up, to give you an example, if you're in a living room and you have a couch with pillows on it, straightening up would mean you would place the pillows very nice and neat on the uh, couches okay. or love seat, whatever you call it. Um, cleaning would be to get a rag and some cleaner and like wipe around that room, like wipe the baseboards. If you have like a fireplace, you want to wipe the fireplace. If you have side tables, you want to clean the side tables and that kind of thing. Okay, so you're sweeping and mopping. Oh yeah, you're going to vacuum mop make sure you have a vacuum make sure you have a vacuum <laughs> i know many people <laughs> i go to clean many people's homes and they don't even have a vacuum and that is pretty much the the essential thing that could rid you of most of your problems actually when you vacuum mm -hmm. it gives you like a clean slate if you've picked up everything off the floor and okay. you vacuum, that's half your battle right there. Mm. So what about sweeping? You don't sweeping? No. I don't use a broom. Okay. Because yeah. I like the vacuum to suck everything up. When you use a broom, and not saying you shouldn't use a broom, but when you use a broom, and I have a lot of clients who have pets, so when you're sweeping, you're sweeping dust up into the air. You're leaving that area. When you come back, you're like, what is that on the floor? Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So you're like, I just swept there. But what happened is you, you know, you threw things up in the air and now those things have settled. And so you want to, I just like to vacuum to make sure everything gets sucked up into the vacuum. We are good to go. Okay. So let me ask you another question. You said having a vacuum is essential. Yes. What are some other essential uh things that you need so like type of detergents you know I've heard things about mixing uh, products together like tell us about that I, I think the easier the better okay <laughs> so for me you know everything isn't going to be the same for everybody people grow up they learn something when they grew up and they stick very closely to that yes the only problem is if you grew up and you never cleaned you cannot stick to that <laughs> <laughs> You really need to develop a new habit and start cleaning. But I, you know, I don't necessarily, okay, so I'm going to say dish soap is essential as well. I really like Dawn dish liquid, you know, and they're not paying us to say this, but Dawn dish liquid gets out so many things and cleans so many things. Dawn dish liquid even gets like, you can get blood out of a shirt. I got blood out of a shirt with dish liquid, with the Dawn dish liquid. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's like the bomb. So you didn't need no OxyClean or nothing? No. <laughs> and I use that also, I use that on tubs and showers and everything. Oh, really? Yes. So like if you have like a, um, a, a shower that has a lot of soap scum, I'll take a green scrubby and I'll, I'll spray the shower with Clorox and then with like a Clorox cleanup okay. spray. 
Not too much because you don't want to die when you go back in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to spray enough and then leave the room. Go clean something else. Come back and then I'll put a little bit of dish soap on a green scrubby and scrub down the shower. And that usually breaks up that soap scum. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have had soap scum there for, let's say, 10 years, and sometimes oh I get clients like that, I just go for a straight razor. A razor? Yeah. So you can get a straight razor with a handle on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, like at the... the um, like the tool store, okay. I don't know what, you know, but um, they have like these straight razors with these handles and you, you just scrape it right on off with the straight razor. That's the easiest way that you're going to get 10 years of soap scum off of something. 10 years? I, it happens. Okay. I, I cleaned a house for a lady who lived in her house for 30 years and there were many areas where she had never cleaned the entire 30 years. Like what baby does. And a lot of times we Lay won't clean what we don't picture. see per se. Yes. So like like um, when you have like a doorway and you have the molding around the door, we, we won't clean on top of that molding because we forget that that is something that needs to be great right. you know above the curtains inside if you have those he the good heavy curtains you can have those good heavy curtains on for five years and never clean the window because the curtains are always shut it might be a room you don't use very often so it's very easy to forget to clean you know different areas and whatnot but you should never forget to clean your bathroom or your kitchen Never. Your, room. your bathroom and your kitchen. I'm adding the room. She's adding the room, but no one has to see your room but you. But that's what you The don't bathroom and the kitchen. People. If someone comes in your house, your kitchen should be clean and they should be able to sit on your toilet, even if they're people who don't sit on toilets. They should be able to sit on the toilet without being afraid that something is going <laughs> to jump on them. <laughs> I'm just saying. You don't need to go to their house then. And you're like, wait, you know what? I think I forgot. So I realized that because, like, you know, when you live with people, you just realize, like, different cleaning styles. Or, you know, and I just was amazed because I guess my mother kind of taught us differently and my dad because they were very, very clean. And so, you know, I think we talked about this before. Like, when you cook food. Like, I think anytime you cook, you should clean the stove off. Right. Even if you don't physically see anything popping. Yeah, just wipe the stove off. Right. Okay, so what else are you doing in the kitchen? You're wiping the stove. You're wiping the counters. How often do you clean out your cabinets? Like, all of that. Is that, like, maybe a once a month type thing? No, or? you can do that seasonally. So, you can do that when it gets warm. Okay. And then, over the winter months when you have some days off, clean out your cabinets. Okay. And then also, so what you really want to do is maintain throughout the year. Okay. So you don't want to ignore things where like, you know, once I, six months down the line, it looks really, really bad. Like so for instance, where you have the, the cupboard and you have your plates in there, right? You're using plates, you're going in and out, you're going to, dust is going to get in there. Mm -hmm. So maybe like once a week, you wipe your counters off, just open up that closet and wipe around the, the, um, the, uh, the plates. Okay. You don't have to move the plates or nothing, but just make sure that lip in there that you can see doesn't you know doesn't have dust on it or dirt okay what about the refrigerator my mom we had to thoroughly clean every week like pull the drawers out of the bottom throw away right. all the old food wipe the counters the doors all of that every week so it depends on maintenance okay if you are maintaining your refrigerator meaning Every time you spill something, you wipe it. No. You don't have to clean out your refrigerator every week. Okay. But you can't, you, I mean, it's good to clean out the refrigerator every week, but that could be a bit much. <laughs> you know, it's, know not, your it's not, it depends on your lifestyle, right. how many people are in the house, how much traffic there is. So for instance, I have seven people in the house. The refrigerator can get pretty dirty in three days. Because they're moving things around, dropping crumbs, you know, fingerprints, you know, that whole thing. And so now even with COVID and all of that, once I, when I, when I, I clean up my kitchen, right? But 
once a week I go in with the Clorox and just spray all the handles and all of that with the Clorox spray and just make sure everything is is wiped down real good okay last thing we'll talk about is the bathroom what are some things because okay when I'm cleaning my bathroom I'm doing the, the you know the uh, baseboards at the bottom the tub and like the front the side the back everywhere that you know you can get something um, I'm sweeping. I realize that people don't sweep their bathroom very often. No, I vacuum the bathroom too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I sweep, but okay. Right. Okay. Um, and what else? So you're doing the sink, the mirrors. Sometimes I wipe down the door because you know where females, you know, hair products fly and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so, am I missing any area that you're cleaning in the yeah, bathroom? Yeah, it depends well, on what, what you have in your bathroom. Like, yeah. So, like, if you have photos on the wall yes you know pictures like or um any type of decoration that stuff needs wiped off right if you have stuff that stays on the counter like let's say you have like some victoria's secret a lot of people have the victoria's secret um hand soaps and their sprays and whatever else people we have like a bunch of that stuff like i'll be like how many you're not using all these every day okay anyway i'm sorry i'm getting saturated so anyway um everything in the bathroom gets dust on it as well right so all of that stuff that you want to keep out on the counter that stuff needs wiped off yes it needs to be wiped off and you need to pick it up and wipe the whole yes counter yes. but a lot we we miss a lot in the bathroom so what i do when i go into a bathroom is i'll do the sinks first so i'll so i'll go in i'll pick up my Clorox cleanup spray. I'll spray the tub, spray one one or two squirts in the um, sinks if they have like double sinks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then I go to scrubbing whatever needs to be scrubbed if it needs to be scrubbed. Because sometimes you'll get like a guest room. You don't need to scrub nothing. You mm -hmm. just need to take spray your rag with the Clorox cleanup and just do a quick wipe on everything. Just, okay. just a wipe over. Okay. You know what I mean? So anyway. I'll go in, I'll do the sink, I'll do the tub, the tub. Um, and then after I do the sink and tub, I start wiping down everything else. So you got cabinets in there, you might have a closet door, mm -hmm. all that needs to be wiped down. Your closet door, the door to the bathroom, mm -hmm. wipe that down, the front and the back, the, the handles, mm -hmm. um, the things that you put your towels on. The towel holder, mm -hmm. that needs wiped off. If it's some type of chrome or um, some type of silver or whatever, you can wait until you are ready to do your mirror. Yeah. So after I do all that wiping down, get all the baseboards and stuff like that, if there's anything um, that needs to be wiped on the sink, mm -hmm. I wipe all that stuff off. You, If you leave the toothpaste on the sink, wipe that off okay mm -hmm. now notice i have not mentioned the toilet the toilet is always last yeah i do always that last. last yeah or you can clean your toilet with paper towels so you don't ever have to worry about touching anything else with like a rag or yeah, I don't, yeah. you know but um you know some people do that and if i have a really bad toilet i'll clean it with paper towels because I don't even want that stuff on my rag. <laughs> so uh, one thing that is key is if you spit up in a toilet mm -hmm. or if you have diarrhea, um, we're women. So we have a tendency to not lift up the toilet seat, right? We always want the toilet seat down. Mm -hmm. So we don't lift up the, you know, the, the seat you sit on. You, We don't lift that up to see what's up under there. If you've ever had diarrhea or if you ever throw up, you have to lift up that seat. Right after you've just diarrhea. Okay. <laughs> diarrhea? Diarrhea. I don't know that's, if that's not a word, word, but we're gonna let her slide today. It's not. I don't care how <laughs> sick you are if you threw up. When you're finished, rinse out your mouth, get your hands washed, all that stuff together. Lift up that seat and clean that seat off. Because you have splattered things. And that stuff is on that seat up underneath there. Yeah. Okay? And so you don't want that stuff to grow. And a lot of times we can't see that with our natural eye. So you want to make sure your toilet is always clean. And always wash your hands after you clean your toilet. Also, one of the things I do is that, um, you know, you said you sweep in the bathroom. Once I'm done cleaning the toilet from top to bottom, 
I take a hand, a, a rag and just wipe around the toilet. Because a lot of times, like I vacuum in there mm -hmm. and you can't get the vacuum in around between that, yeah. the toilet and the wall or mm -hmm. whatever the case. So I take my rag and just wipe out any dust. Hopefully there's not pee and poop and anything else on the floor. <laughs> so just wipe that floor with your rag. Put your rag in a, well, we have a dirty rag bags so that we put in a bag. Um, you would need to take your rag to the, I don't know. You don't want to put that in the dirty clothes with your clothes. So you want that to be like straight to the laundry room or to a bag where it's going to wait to be washed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you want to make sure to mop um, your floor or hand wipe it if your yeah, bathroom is not that big. Yeah, I'll hand just wipe hand it. wipe the floor, especially too, because you'll be able to see all the corners and cracks and stuff that you may have missed. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that. That that's what I would call thoroughly clean. That's, that's thorough clean. Right. Yeah. And that's what I do when I clean the bathroom. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I'm alternating with my roommate or every week, if it was just me, that's kind of the thing that we do. And so yeah, I'm lifting the toilet seat up. I'm wiping it. I'm wiping the actual seat. Like all of that at the top of it, and then we we have stuff on our um on our calendar, so we'll you know I'll take that off and wipe it and stuff like that. But I just realized that sometimes when people clean, if you just talk to them or you know happen to see them, they don't they don't do that. Like right. the, the, the baseboards, you know, I, I we have like a windowsill and this dust there, so I was wiping the windowsill, the windowsill yeah. Yeah. right? You know, and it's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, just some people doesn't do that. So it's interesting. I wonder if parents, like, the first time they taught their children how to clean, did they do it with them to show them and then it's the expectation oh, yeah. or just cl go clean the bathroom? Yes. Most times people be like, just go clean the bathroom. But you want to be able to teach your child and not only teach your child, but but leave a note and if you're if you're just teaching a child and the child is still young and you need to teach them at a young age. Don't wait till they get older with nasty attitudes <laughs> to make them clean their bathroom. Start them young so that they're familiar and it's not as bad as, you know, they've become a 17-year-old and now you're talking about cleaning the bathroom. It's like, what? Like, they should have been cleaning the bathroom, like, at 10. Yeah, my, my so now I got to clean up. She don't clean like a bathroom. She'll straighten up the shoes by the door or something like that. But all of them are clean. My sister don't even clean anymore. Like one washes, the other one dries, put the dishes up, like type thing. Um, my nephew cleans the bathroom and stuff like that. And I love Smeet, do the kitchen and stuff like that. So yeah, and they're young because Sanaa will be eight in April. Yeah. And yep. so she's cleaning and then Nyla just turned 14 and, you know, Adisa and, and, and Nasir, you know, so they're all cleaning and stuff. Yeah. So you want to start them off young so that they're familiar and it's not foreign to them. You especially don't want to have the attitude of they don't do it right. So I'm going to just do it mm -hmm. because what you're doing is creating a very trifling child. Right. And then they go get their own apartment and it's going to They'll go to college and nobody wants to room with them because they're nasty. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Or if they don't go to college, let's say they just get a job at McDonald's and finally they find their wife at McDonald's and now she got to clean up after that man like he's a child because that's what you did. So we want to teach our, our children mm -hmm. how to be adults. Right. You We have to equip them for life. Yep. You know, so when they get their own place, they're able to maintain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And not have an infestation of like roaches and oh, stuff. Gosh, no, that's mm -hmm. nasty. It is. Yes. And another thing too, <laughs> if you find that you have an infestation of something, get some help. It's not hard. Make the sacrifice and get some help. There's cheaper places out there. You know, you might not. Want to go with the main place like Orkin or I don't know who's out there. I don't know. But either. call somebody. Go to the dollar store and get some bombs and set off some bombs in the house. Something. But don't let an infestation, something so small. Okay, let's say you see one roach one day. Then the next time you see 10 roaches. Okay. Then the next time it's like, oh, where are these roaches coming from? You need to call somebody. I'm just saying. All right. I got one last question. Okay. Carpet. A lot of people have carpet. Like I like mm -hmm. hardwood floors in common areas. I prefer carpet in my bedroom. Right. 
So carpet, how often should that be like clean, like deep clean? Like obviously you're going to vacuum it, but vacuum is just getting up stuff. Like how often should you like deep clean or clean your carpet? You should deep clean your carpet twice a year. Okay. If it's just a regular, you know, um, regular traffic. Now, if you have like all these people in the house, like I got, you know, you might have to do it every three months or something like that, but you want to do it often to keep up with your carpet. Um, okay. To keep it clean. And also, too, if you own your house, the value goes down with, you know, if, if your carpet looks bad. The value of your house goes down if you have pets and don't clean up after them. Mm -hmm. You never want to take on the responsibility of having a pet and don't train it to go to the bathroom outside. Train the dog on pet. Don't keep letting it and then give up. Like, oh, I just, they just be peeing. Like, what? Get rid of the dog if you feel like you can't train it to not go to the bathroom on the floor or on the couch or wherever. And if you have a, ha a cat going to the bathroom everywhere, that's not their norm. So something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, don't, don't let your house go to animals. Mm -hmm. You know, and children, <laughs> like keep up with your house. And I'm not the, I wouldn't say that I, I might clean your house very t detailed from top to bottom. I don't do that all the time. I don't, I got stuff around. Sailor's got her toys and stuff over there. There's books over there. I mean, you know, there's stuff around. So I'm not saying this in any judgmental kind of way. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is you want to keep the value of the house up. So in order to do that, you, there are certain things you can't let go. Mm -hmm. So you want to clean your house regularly. You want to clean your what carpets regularly. regularly. Your house? Yes. You need to specify that because regularly, could, you know you do. You go to somebody's house and they have dishes in their sink for like two weeks. Like that's not, uh, but they think every two weeks is regularly. So what do, what do you mean by no, that? No, that's not regular. That's being trifling. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that, that's not even funny. Like, it's not. If but you've left your dishes in the sink for two weeks, that is trifling and that is nasty. Okay. Now let's define regularly. Okay. So if you are a single person, let's say you just by yourself mm -hmm. or maybe just a couple, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you eat, wash your dish. And then don't have hangups. Like you have a whole dishwasher. Instead of leaving the dishes in the sink for two weeks, put them jokers in the dishwasher and wash them. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you can't wash a dish, put it in the dishwasher if you have one. And it's okay to wash five dishes in a large dishwasher. It's okay. It's going to be okay for you, especially because what you don't, excuse me, what you don't want to do is you know, the thought process of mm -hmm. I'm going to be trifling instead of making sure that I'm maintaining the house properly. Right. It only takes a few seconds to wash a dish. Every time you cook, every time you cook, when you're done cooking, just wipe stuff off. Right. And there's maintenance that you can do in between. So a lot of times while people are cooking, you know, let's say you, you're you cooking a soup. You finally get all the ingredients in and the soup is just boiling on the stove. Start washing them And dishes. you go sit down. That's the wrong thing to do. Ciao. If you don't have a dishwasher, that's the time to wash the, you might have cut the up spoon. onions. Yeah. You might have done some other things. Mm -hmm. Wash that stuff up while the food is cooking. Right. My mother said, wash as you go. That's then right. at the end, when it's like after you are full, it's not like a whole sink of dishes. Clean you wash as nothing. you go. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And so especially, too, if you're somebody like me who has, I, I might be doing like four, there might be four pots on the stove at the same time. And I can't because of everybody's um, people got allergies and all that kind of thing. I can't cross contaminate. So I might use six spoons in one like you know mm -hmm. i might use a lot of spoons a lot of forks mm -hmm. i might use a lot of spatulas it as soon as i'm done i immediately put those things in the dishwasher because i have a dishwasher i don't even put things in the sink 
Mm -hmm. Just go straight to the dishwasher. You know, I do use my sink though, because sometimes the dishwasher might be full or whatever the case. But the best thing to do is to make sure that your kitchen is clean before you go to bed so that you have a clean slate when you wake up the next morning. And then dry your sink out. Lord. <laughs> now you don't have to dry your sink out. But it does look pretty. It does. When you dry your sink it does. out. But you don't have to do that. It looks really nice. It'll be okay if you don't. <laughs> but it does look very pretty. All right. Okay. Any other questions? No, that's it. What is our black history? Oh. Oh shoot. I should have had that ready. Hold on. Oh. I know we was looking at something else. Yeah. All right, so um, for Black History, okay. Oh shoot! Um, there we go. See, look at that. Oops. Wait, where is it? Wait, these are just the photos. Where's the um the story? Um, Bear with us, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so black history facts you won't find in school books. I found this on Facebook, and I thought it has some really good stories. So I'm just going to read like a little story. It's pretty short. So in 1903, Will West was convicted of a crime and was sent to Leavenworth Penitentiary. During processing at the prison, Will West underwent the same procedure that every new inmate went through upon arrival. A catalog of physical measurements, including standing height, sitting height, length of trunk and head, distance between fingertips with arms outstretched, and size of head, right ear, left foot, digits, and forearm. In addition, a photo and a distinctive personal features such as eye color, scars, and deformities were noted. This was known as the Bertillon system and was the gold standard at the time for identifying criminal defendants. As the prison clerk was entering the Bertillon data, he came across the file of a William West, an inmate currently at the prison serving a life sentence with a similar mugshot and Bertillon numbers as Will West. The clerk pulled the mugshot for William West and noticed he had the exact same bone structure, equal nose length, mouth shape, and positioning of the eyes as the person sitting in the chair in front of him. The two men who looked almost identical, this is Will West and William Ooh. West, <laughs> were not twins, and were not even related. The men had the same name and strangely enough, almost identical facial features, but to the surprise of prison officials, excuse me, were two completely different individuals. Soon after this case occurred, the reliability of Bertillon measurements came into question and the era of fingerprints had begun. begun. Today, Thanks to these two unrelated yet identical men, the fingerprint analysis is employed by every law enforcement agency in every country all over the world. So I thought that was a very interesting story on how fingerprints got started. Yes. We started fingerprints. Yeah. How about that? Black history. <laughs> and y'all should look it up because... The two guys do literally look like they could be twins. One has like just a wider jaw and a like longer. They look, yeah. yeah. So, oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I yeah. yawned earlier. Oh, no. Praise yeah. God. Okay. <laughs> That's all black history facts. Yes. So, until next time, have a good day. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And check out our Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook, right? All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.